Face reality, people. Movies are dead. Games are dead. Narrative, dead. Media is nothing but neural trigger response and viral conditioning. Wait, what are you two talking about? Go ahead. So yeah, just to rehash what I said before you started recording, um, the Laker game had like a debacle of uh, technical issues, but also from what I'm hearing from Samson, I'm honestly t- I'm taking his word for it. There were also like ref ref problems and the way the officiating is going on. And so the the videos are going to play after this. It's like these guys live like in a fucking vacuum or like they but, but most people live this way where like things are happening behind the scenes and they don't recognize that the law of the land isn't made by some like like fucking bene- benevolent mm-hmm. um like I don't even know like like um I don't even know. You'd have to ask on a case by case scenario what they think, but it feels like they think shit just is just there. Shit's just there, and we're like, and and they just take it at face value. So like, oh, these players are better than ever. And it's like, dude, look at the way things are surrounding the game. Look at the way calls are being made. Calls are not being made from from uh, Jesus Christ Himself. They're being made by human <laughs> beings who are being led by other human beings who are running the entire show. And so there's, so yeah, there's things going on that are like, they're um like, be behind the scenes, and they manifest themselves in certain ways, and people don't really take the time to to realize these things. <laughs> Shit, I don't, I don't do that. Probably you don't do that all the way, Jordan. Like no one, no one like um is being a hundred percent um in the know of every little aspect of any little thing they care about true but, but the, it's always it's omnipresent that if you're watching something if you're if you're part of something there's something else going on behind the scenes that you don't know about and so this that's why i kind of like listen to this guy i don't agree with everything he says clearly mm-hmm. but there he does have that perspective of we're in the entertainment business. This is a, a sport. Yeah, this is a sport that you like and all that, but there's dollars and cents attached to it, and and that brings certain stipulations, certain um, aesthetical, aesthetically pleasing policies that have to be put in place <laughs> based on like the decision makers being the owners telling the league what to do because that's how it works, and not the other way. The league doesn't tell the owners what to do; it's the other way around. And people lose sight of these things. Can, can I say this nasty little B word? Uh, baseball. Uh, uh, yeah. Um, uh, hey, uh, audience, have you ever heard of inflated baseballs? You ever heard yeah. of that? Like where, where a sport might be willing to go? Uh, yeah, dry cleaning, dry cleaning baseballs. Put them in a dryer. Oh, dryers, hum, dryers, humidors, wherever the fuck they can get there. Like, <laughs> Whatever might inflate so the home run numbers. Farther, yeah. Moving you fences in. Oh. You heard of a magnet in a basketball? <laughs> I'm not going <laughs> there. I'm not going there. <laughs> I'm sorry, I don't give a fuck. <laughs> you heard of deflating a football? Putting um, <laughs> putting stick them on your gloves? <laughs> and it sounds absolutely ridiculous until someone gets caught. And then it's like, whoa, yeah. oh, deflate gate. Uh like well these things might actually happen red Sox are notorious for keeping their infield like their grass higher to slow down ground balls for their own team and or for uh opposing teams it slows down their ground balls just on analytics uh, maybe this team hits more ground balls than the other team so we we cut the grass or we keep the grass a little higher it's like bro if you don't think sports can be a dirty thing like i don't know what to tell you so uh well well it's like dude it's like it's it's right in their faces, and they glorify it, and they don't even realize that it's like, like yo, just go a step further, and then it'll make more sense. Motherfuckers are shaving points. The fucking mafia's involved. So why wouldn't the leagues be involved? Which is what the that ref is saying. Like, like come on, like, and so it all goes back to that. David Stern, all these fucking commissioners, but like, let's use David Stern for an example. Like, come on, man, they. They are mandating the refs to do X, Y, and Z and do not do X, Y, and Z, like calling certain <laughs> flagrants and yep. calling and not calling certain travels. 
as much as I think Rashad, uh, Rashid Wallace is a little bit over the top. At the same time, was he not targeted? He was. Yeah, he was targeted. He, he was targeted. Got a, he got a tech for doing nothing. Looking at the <laughs> actually, fans might not realize this unless you're watching basketball and I air it. Tim Duncan was kind of targeted. He'd do like little things and he'd be getting fucking tech. He got text from the bench, bro. He 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 raised his hands once, like, "What the fuck was that called?" I don't even think he said anything. They called a fucking tech on that guy on the bench mm-hmm. as he's watching the game, like, "Whoa." That's fucking crazy. That's insanity, man. And I know the narrative wise for like the mainstream networks is that it's refs with their own the refs are trying to have their big egos and trying to be trying to be the center of attention. It's like, well, that's not what a, a veteran NBA ref like Tim Donaghy would well, say. <laughs> like that's Well, let me ask you this. It's 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 crazy, bro. Like Stephen A is fucking wild. Like the whole Teddy Atlas, um, with the whole um, Triple G and Canelo yes. shit, where Teddy Atlas is like, he is screaming at the top of his <laughs> lungs, like, look, it's look with your own eyes, this doesn't make sense, and he and this guy is, this guy is pretty much saying the same thing, but trying to cover the company's ass. It's like, no, 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 this is not, <laughs> this is not, it can't be, it can't be because my bosses are paying these leagues. <laughs> billions of dollars yes. to, to to keep them afloat and keep themselves afloat so they can't let the league be tarnished because they have an investment a vested interest in seeing the league prosper. It, it's on the surface and I'm going to play the video after this yes. it, it's on the surface and it's below the surface it's in both areas boxing yes. as much as you watch a fight that looks like, like wait a minute how'd they judge it this mm-hmm. way Okay, there's your maybe gambling leanings or whatever the lines are in Vegas, whatever the fuck. And you have on the surface shit where it's like, well, why is there an IBA, a WBO, IBF, whatever the fuck champion? Why are there several fucking heavyweight champions instead of just one? Well, guess what? They found out that championship fights get higher ratings, thus generating more money. So thus they have more four or five separate fucking belts for no fucking reason other than that reason. It's like I'm telling. That's not on. That's the on the surface, and then the gambling shit is probably under underneath the surface. Like you're getting hit from both sides. Pause. Like, that's there, and if you yeah. you don't realize that as a fan, like you're getting cucked. Let's be honest. You're getting cucked. Man. You may not realize it. Uh, all right. Want to hop in this video? Yeah, let's do it. There we go. Here's more uh, David Sampson. Screen this. I was watching the Lakers Warriors game this weekend and something's got to change. You see the clock went out, the 24 second clock wasn't working. So they had the announcer, the, the PA announcer, 10 seconds, five. The final like 15 seconds took 18 minutes. They showed all the board celebrities. We go through contingencies. When you run a ballpark, we do rehearsals for things that could go wrong. So for example, We'll do a rehearsal for a bunch of lights going off and we'll write down, if this bank of lights go off, we can keep playing. If this bank and this bank of lights go off, we can't keep playing. If we have to turn all the lights off and turn them on, it'll take X amount of time. We go through a rehearsal of how much time it takes to put a tarp on even under a roof, how much time it takes to, if we have to switch out home plate, which is buried. If you've never lifted a home plate, it's not like a base. Home plates are deep in the ground and super yep. heavy. Yeah. But we'll go through all the different things that potentially could happen. What to do if the scoreboard's out, how we'll communicate to the dugouts, what the balls and strikes are, how we'll communicate to the scores of thousands of people in the stands if your Jumbotron goes down. We'll deal with corporate sales with what to do if sponsors do not get their advertisements because the LED mm-hmm. boards are out. We go through it all. They got to come up with something better in the NBA. You just have to come up with something better than taking that amount of time. The NBA is way more focused, way more focused on scoring. And they are out there denying. Denial is not just a river in Egypt. I always used to like that. They made it their business. Remember last week we talked about saying, Seems like scoring's down, notwithstanding the 140 to 129 Bucks win over the Suns this past weekend. Seems like scoring's down, and we were talking about it with that 79-73 game the Knicks and Sixers were involved in. And Mm. the NBA came out, and they wanted everyone to know this was not a directive from the league. 
they said it's really the focus of officials. That's the key word right I there. I just want that to be <laughs> for one second. Do you think the officials got together during the All-Star break and said, we're going to really start focusing right now and making sure that the scoring goes down? Do you really think that when the officials get together before a game, that they're on their own, the three of them talking about the situation around the game and what's going on and what they need to be doing? Sometimes, but no. I'll explain that later. There's league officials. League officials are completely involved in this. The NBA is claiming that when the competition committee met, they really were talking about offensive players hunting for fouls. They were talking about officiating and how their emphasis is that's what's decreased scoring, not us saying we want to decrease in scoring. Then they wrote a memo so there would be a breadcrumb trail about this situation. So pause it real quick. What he just said, please keep it in mind when we watch the next couple of videos because it it will be that what he's saying is a direct correlation showing behind the scenes. He's saying something behind the scenes, and then you're going to see how it's totally disregarded by like normie fans. Oh, I've now I'm going to throw this out there. I'm going to be really quick. Uh, Kevin Garnett had Adam Silver on. I've seen I think a lot of people have seen this clip of Adam Silver saying, "Well, we need to do something about, you know, the ability to play defense because it, the scoring is going out of control." Adam Silver said that uh, on Kevin Garnett's show or something that. like that. Okay. I didn't know that. He did say that. And then recently I saw a video from Bill Simmons. Hopefully people know Bill Simmons as the you know, yeah. the Boston fan guy, like that guy, right? Yeah. He said, "I've been watching games recently." And it seems like a lot more like rough play is allowed, like meaning more defense is allowed as far as being physical on defense. And now I'm hearing this guy, like these are like in like in a timeline. Yeah. When he said breadcrumbs, I'm, I'm like, oh my god. <laughs> I'm glad I showed you this. Uh, I didn't know this. Yes. Those, I didn't know those two things. I, I mentioned it somewhere in one of the videos, and. I it, I didn't take it like that serious. Like I didn't like run with it. It's just like, hmm, this idea seems to be out here. And so, yeah, I don't know. If I, I don't know if I want to mention it now. I, I'm going to anyways. But we're gonna watch a video after this, where this guy is like saying, like he literally said, we have better defenders now than we did before. Sam, and his Jackson saying that. No, 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 no. One oh, oh the, okay, okay, okay. Yeah. And his justification for why points, there's more points being scored is players are more efficient and they're more, they're more, um, they're more prone to shoot threes. <laughs> and then, um, yeah, and it's like, it's like, come on, dude. It's, it's like, and then I'm, I'm thinking about what you're saying, where like, if you really look at the percentage of threes being made now, to 20 years or 30 years ago, it's like, it's like, a, um, what's that shit? What's that word called in politics? Um, margin of error. Yeah, like a plus one or two in one direction yeah. or the other. It's not like it's crazy. So in, in a sense, in a sense. That would not make up for the the point differentials from then till now. No, not on its own. So something has to give that for it's 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 blind to the naked eye of these fans. It's blind to them. But if like it, that's all. It's like hard, man. It's like um, I don't know. I don't want to be a dickhead. I don't want to be like oh. I know more than you or oh I'm looking at this more analy not even I, don't, I hate the word analytically more I don't know more I'm more keen on the the surroundings around a narrative more than the narrative itself that's like, okay, that's fair that's fair. you're telling me this is happening but I'm like so why is x y and z not being talked about in the equation most likely they don't know about it they don't know about it, but it's I don't I I, I guess that I, I am being a dickhead when I hear I hear surliness I hear a certain certitude of what they're saying being fact, and I was like I that doesn't sound the the math ain't math for me on that. 
Well, but I'll, anyway, but before I continue, Blen, I'll give you the words that are being thrown around a lot in regards to points per game from teams and and on like a league average. It's pace of play. That's the yeah. argument I hear yeah, consistently. Yeah. They're playing at a higher place. They're shooting earlier in the, in the shot clock, whatever, something like that, right? Yeah. And it's it's like, dude, like I saw the Showtime Lakers. What are you talking about? <laughs> Who the fuck are you talking? What the fuck are you kidding, bro? Well, I don't know. I don't know their exact arguments, but they might say that that era had a higher pace of play as well. I'm not sure. It like, and my my thing is, which is something that like, okay, like even I would have like till this point right now before the statement, of it, I would have a hard time articulating is I am seeing less resistance to stopping you from scoring. <laughs> yeah, me too. <laughs> me too. Considering what I got away with when I was in high school, which is like, what is it, like 2004 or five or, or six or whatever, where it's like, yeah. it, like, that's not that long ago, but at the same time, it's like, what I was able to do and what I would get called for, like, if you do like a jab step and that back pivot foot fucking moves, you're getting called travel, man. Oh, Even yeah. at the high school now, level. <laughs> it's like, now it's all, it's all kosher. I, I think the the rules thing is I think is the the biggest change, but right. I'm wanting to hear more arguments about it. I, I'm sure it's like what you're saying, where there's like there's X, Y, and Z, and fucking A, B, and C, all these different factors surrounding yeah. what's actually happening. And we sh- did you watch the whole Jimmy High Roller video you sent me? Or we're done with the '90s. Yes, I have. I watched the whole thing. Yeah. Did I, I heard in the comment section? Did he bring up a point where the league is now? Um, like um, they've made the rules so that you can showcase your. Is, is, did he make that point? <laughs> I, I, I no, I don't want to misquote him. I don't want to misquote him. But he did bring up the idea of like, hey, look, like he, he showed he showed footage of Magic Johnson, right? It's like Magic can't yeah. put the put his hand at the side of, side of the basketball, or he'll be called for a carry. And he showed numerous examples of guys getting called for carries that would never get called to that, right? And, it, and maybe he yeah. said that quote. You know, within that little no, maybe period they in the just, video, they, they yeah, they said that for him then, probably. Maybe, maybe, maybe not. I, I'm not going to go there. I, I don't. I can't quote him. So he he might have said but it. I don't know. That was a sentiment, though. Like, oh, they're now able to reach their full potential as an offensively skilled player, <laughs> which to <laughs> me it doesn't make sense. But it know. doesn't. It doesn't make sense to me either. <laughs> like, I'm, I'm pretty sure. I, I'll, I'll we'll go about we might go over a video something like that later where I, I heard something about Magic Johnson where he would do certain dribble moves but he knows it'd be called for something so he didn't do them <laughs> like I don't know it's, that's another time let's let's continue on with this yeah, video yeah. here we go trail about this situation what would be wrong with Joe Dumars just standing up and saying yeah. We don't think it's great for the game to have 69 threes taken by each team every game. We don't think it's terrific when it's 152 to 131. We don't think it's great when there's 25 point blowouts. We want competitive games. We don't want 81 all-star games. As it is, they are desperate to find meaning for the regular season. Equilibrium. They are desperate yeah. to try to figure out how to get players motivated. They tried load management, play 65, or you can't get an award. That didn't work. It, sorry, sorry to stop it, but this is all like refereeing and and basketball is subjective as fuck. It's yes. very it's very subjective. So like the, like the idea of getting rid of physical defense for a referee, like there there's a scale to that, and there's an eras there's eras based on that as far as referees go, as far as what they consider too physical versus okay physical. You know what I mean? And that goes in regards to flagrant fouls and all these things. So maybe, hey, if someone leaps in the air and elbows someone in the fucking face, maybe call that as flagrant. But if someone fucking slaps hard at the at someone's arms to stop them from like you know what they're doing, they're trying to stop the and one. So they foul them kind of hard on their arms to stop them. From, like maybe that's a different type of call. But if the referees are pushing, uh, let's be real, if they're doing kind of doing like narratives through the refereeing. Of oh my god the Lakers on a twenty game fucking win streak look at this by maybe getting them more foul calls or taking away foul calls like then it kind of like you're you're kind of caught on this scale that 
can push you over the line or way below the line. And I think that may be where we're at, I think. Uh, or maybe back in the day, like, way over the line was, you know, it, it's, like, egregious, like, fist fighting type of th- shit, right? Where it's, yeah. like, egregious elbows. And too chippy. Too yes. chippy. But today's fucking over the line is maybe you stared at him after you blocked the shot or something. You know, it's too much. <laughs> But like, like maybe there's some sort of fine balance, but that's could be up to the subjectivity of the referee, which is also being used by the league itself to push something one direction or another. It, it's it, as convoluted as I just sounded. I think the league actually works that way. We're just like, yeah. what the fuck is going on here? And Back- also, where 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 is the talent pool for referees being pulled from? Because yeah, sure. if you think. <laughs> But also, like, what it's like, um, the league could just as easily want a certain kind of money. It's like, it's, it's no different than, like, the the Noam Chomsky with, with people working for broadcast news. Where, like, you already yeah. think this way. We don't have to tell you this. You already think this way, and that's the way we want you to think. <laughs> so we're looking for people that are like-minded already in that way, that don't have to be told, hey... If James Harden takes four steps, just look the other way. Don't even worry about it. You're already of that inclination. That's true, but I think basketball is way less like, like move like or uh, politics is way less movable than the NBA is because these guys are making business decisions. They're looking at stocks every day. You're like, okay, do yeah. we start making rules this way or that way? Like from each from one year to the next, I think politics will go a little bit slower as as far as them trying to read the temperature of what the fucking nation wants or whatever, or what they'll yeah, well, I mean, go yeah, for. Yeah, I meant the, the, I meant like more like the, the broadcasters. Yeah, it's, yeah. Well, I think that I might as well just tie them to politicians. Yeah, you know, no, well. I got, you. I got. You. I think the NBA is a little bit more malleable because they're, lo- they're like, if there's something new that if there's some sort of phenomenon. Oh, this guy's shooting eighty foot fucking jump shot. He's shooting from the other side of the court. Rules would start changing from there on out, guaranteed. Here's a four four point rule for the guy who can shoot from eighty feet. <laughs> I'm, like I'm, I can almost see that happening verbatim, like in in the NBA, they can just change it over, like from one yeah, season to the, the next, NFL, very quickly. The NFL's, done it. the NFL's done it. Yeah. So yeah. <laughs> yeah. Baseball. Oh, good God. Oh. If you want an example of how things can change for a sport, baseball might be number one, right? Yes, of course. Yeah, it might be. Uh. All right, here we go. The league pulls the strings of referees. That's not news. No, it's That's not. normal, standard operating procedure. But when you don't want to tell the truth, you get caught in this web of confusing lies where everyone just rolls their eyes. It makes absolutely no sense to me. <laughs> Can you pause that real quick? I don't think these normies realize that as as like as blatant as it is to you or me and him. There's a lot of these these guys that they don't view it that way. They they think it's been it's not not the benevolent is even a word. They just think that's the way things are. They don't question the the little intricacies of of how the game is being viewed by the league and the reps who are literally the kingmakers of the game. <laughs> yeah, which is some of the things that annoys me about some of these these newer guys. Yeah. I've seen. How is that? How is that missing from your from your analysis? It has to be present all at all times. Yes, it does. <laughs> yeah. Uh. Yeah, they, uh... it's like, we're, it's like the the bibbity bobbity guy. We're witnessing greatness with LeBron, and the... <laughs> it's like you motherfuckers. <laughs> yeah. I forgot the word, but it's like method methodological, like Method-o- like methodological, or something? like like criticism or something. Like where you're like constantly like have to like be paying attention because. We've already seen this in sports. 
So it's and like the just because yeah, Tim Donaghy's gone doesn't mean the the league changes over like yes, that. Like, yes. Just because Adam Silver's yes. in and David Stern's gone does not mean the league changes over. He worked yes. under yes. David Stern. Yes. Like, come on. Just bro. because you caught Bernie Madoff doesn't mean there aren't people trying to fuck you over. Exactly. <laughs> That's preschool they, fucking they, thinking. Jesus. They, you watch every game and you don't start realizing how these calls are being made, like what and what calls aren't being made. <laughs> I digress. There was always a thing with superstar calls and shit like that, but sometimes there's just egregiousness yeah, of things. It, it, it's, we're way beyond that now. It's like, yeah, it's like, yeah, this guy's this guy's a face of the league. He he gets treated. It's like, no, it's a mandate league wide. Everybody's <laughs> getting away with shit now, bro. This this the fucking seventh man is getting calls like superstar calls now. Like what were what yeah. were superstar calls years ago are now like normal car calls. For the seventh, eighth guy coming off the bench, it's and also what they're allowed to get away with, like AI, right? There would be games where he would get oh, he would no get, get away with carrying, and games he wouldn't, based on maybe how the, how, maybe how the ref feels. Yeah, you Joe Crawford off. <laughs> right. Now everyone can just do that shit. Like it, it's all right. More from this guy, or are we going to the other clips? Oh, uh, I think we're I, we could we could end here. I think, yeah, because he goes by, yeah, it's over, because you can see the timestamp's almost over. Yeah, just end it here. Yeah. Let's let's get these little short. There's three little shorts. I, I think he established a point that is going to play a role in what these guys think. Oh, yes. Um, Did one, I think this is the one. Let's see what this says. All right, here we go. What did he say? Refresh. Oh, yeah. People, the um, what's it called? Like a couple of days ago, and then we were talking about. They was like, "Yeah, you know, the '90s BS. They don't play defense now. You know, you can't be playing defense when he's scoring like 130 and 100 showing block points. shots and saying that." And I'm just saying that, like, bro, like that's one of the most craziest, like that's one of the most craziest and ridiculous arguments to make. That because of no, points no. per game, that this is the reason why there's no defenders, right? Because I told him, I said, bro, you think the '80s had defense? They were scoring just as much in the early '80s than there was than there is right now. So that's the pace of play thing. Like, you wanna know why? Because they play fast. They played genuinely fast, and with the explosion of three point with three pointers in the league, it's like, bro, what's with the increase of pace and the increase of threes? The points there it is going to be that high. So does that mean the defenders aren't that good anymore? No. If I, if honestly, you can make the argument that they're better than what than they've ever Please been. Please make it. People, Please make uh, it. What's it called? Like a couple of days <laughs> ago, over. and then we were talking about. They was like, I'm curious what the timestamps of the actual basketball game were when because. Let's say if someone's making the argument that nowadays defense looks like yesteryear's All Star games, where it's like, okay, no one's really playing defense. They're just like, until the last two minutes. <laughs> when it's the last two minutes, then we're going for like hard defense and blocking shots and all that shit. Then we're like, yeah. like putting effort into it. But until then, we're just saving energy to score points on offense. <laughs> it will run like a little team defensive system to where we all save energy and hopefully they missed their three point shot. Or Mr. Shot or whatever. I mean, you have to put that into perspective here with us. Uh, but, yeah. It, the uh, it, I don't really know. I don't know, personally. But, obviously what players are allowed to get, get away with on offense would make it hard on defense. And the ability and the idea of not being able to be physical with them, which is something that like I said with the with the KG and Adam Silver interview, the Bill Simmons yeah. the Bill Simmons thing. Like if they're starting to allow that to open up to where everyone gets to play like Draymond instead of just Draymond by himself, right? This is just my personal opinion from observation. I think Draymond's just been allowed to be more physical than everyone else has, and it kind of yeah. kind of boosts him up a bit. If everyone's allowed to do that, I, I guess we'll see. I hope so, because he's he's not. Well, he does flagrant foul sometimes, but he's not <laughs> on average. He's not egregious, right? He's not just elbowing, mm -hmm. elbowing people. He he just plays hard defense and he puts bodies on people and you know tries to make them miss shots or or he tries to grab rebounds from it. Like that's perfectly fine. Uh, but this whole era, this this era of of this scoring is influenced a lot more than by. Uh, three, yeah, three's in pain. 
Threes and pace. Threes and pace. Yes. <laughs> They're like, look, man, what if, uh, because that, that was the thing, another thing that Adam Silver said, not Adam Silver, but uh, someone else, maybe, maybe it was Rob Thorne years ago, where they were observing when the scoring was kind of down. Where it's like, we need something to open up to let the, the players be able to showcase their package more, pause, showcase their fucking scoring ability more. Which may be like what uh, Jimmy Hyroller might have highlighted in his video. Maybe. It might have been from Rob Thorne. To where like, oh, like this, these defenses, because of how physical they are, they're stifling the offense and the talents that could be there. <laughs> so we need to like kind of open it up more. Yeah. Jordan wants to see more of your package. Yeah, you heard up. it here first. Uh, shut up. <laughs> But yeah, that, that's definitely a thing, and that's league, like, I don't, don't want to say mandated, but it's heavily influenced, and it's, on the refs is mandated. The refs, it, it is mandated for the refs. I'm saying for the way the refs affect the players, it ends up being influenced. So, and like, here's my conspiracy theory. The coaches know what the refs are going to be more inclined to call or not call. And it just, they're their game plans accordingly. Tell the players you get away with this, you can't get away with that. I'd say coaches and players. Remember the James Harden thing where he'd like he'd hold the ball out, wait for you to reach in, and then pull his arms up to hit his arm with your arm, and they would call yeah. fouls for him. They had to change that yeah. rule around because it was so egregious. They had to change that fucking rule around of uh, calling that one. But he was doing that for a decent amount of time. Yeah, and it's like. Once he found out, hey, we're going to start calling that. He stopped doing it. Like, he, these guys definitely have communications with each other, players and coaches, I think. Especially star players. <laughs> uh, anything else you want to add to this one? Cause, no, no, uh, no, no. We can continue on. All right, let's keep going here. It's another uh, player's choice. The 90s or the current era is more. Skilled, easy work. Come on now. This is this this is a question that I think a five year old could answer. We talking so skills real- is today's, and we're talking. So I think you won me over on the argument that overall, maybe today's players are more skilled, but the upper echelon player is the same, if not <laughs> better back then. It depends on what name you pick. Let's yeah. be honest. Who's a better slasher? Uh. Who's a new guy? A new slat, new new era slasher. Uh, maybe like uh, kind of like a Zach Levine, even though even though everyone has to shoot three pointers now, but he still has yeah. the athleticism of a slasher, right? Yeah. Who's better, him or Vince Carter? I'm taking Vince all day and all night. I'm taking Vince. Oh, like no, it's not even fucking close. I'm taking Vince Carter. Uh, the, the the way Michael Jordan moves around is not guardable or stoppable in any fucking era, as far as I've seen. Yeah. There's no one who can slide their feet to keep up with a guy that that's who, who's six foot six and moves that quickly, and has a mid range to stop on a dime and hit a fucking jump shot in your face. You're not stopping that guy. Sorry. Who can score like Kobe in the modern NBA? Who can score like him? Like actually, like yeah, Luca can score, but can he score like Kobe from all parts of the court, everywhere on the court, without doing triple dipple step backs? <laughs> it's like, like yeah. come on, give Kobe that setback. Give MJ that setback. Like these guys are assassins; they're disgusting. But I, I think they're getting disrespected by uh, dipshits. And I'm not trying to disrespect the new era. It's just like, bro, you guys get away with more shit. It's obvious. All oh, these, oh, these idiots are gonna bring up his left hand thing. <laughs> Fuck. All right, let's continue then. Jesus Christ. Gonna handle jump shot. I, I don't know if there's anything, any skill set the 90s had that was better than today. And again, evolution, they've learned from the guys in the 90s, so we understand. Uh, MJ's first step. Go recreate that in a lap somewhere, uh, yeah. whoever the fuck this guy is. <laughs> show, show, me, show me MJ's first step. Show me in the league who has, who has MJ's first step. In fact, it'll be a guy that, that's kind of like yesteryear, which is Russell Westbrook, right? See how quick that guy is? See how athletic and like quick he is, like devastatingly strong and quick. Like who else? Who else is like that? Has a quick first step like MJ. 
guess what? Russ is 6'3". MJ's 6'6". Like, where where are these guys then? Good God. Like, it's, it's so... David Robinson. Go watch that guy run around. Like, who? Who's like that? Giannis? Oh, you're superstars? Like, sure. Superstars with superstars. Fine. This is why I said, I said that term, Anthony, about the blanket. Like, okay, the scope of skill is much larger. Sure. Yeah. But the top one percenters are the top one percenters anywhere. There we go. And why they're more skilled today? It's clearly today. Mm-hmm. Look at that Definitely. shit. Definitely. Look at the highlight you and, used. And the big man yeah. has benefited from that the most, to be quite honest with you. This era should clear. We're talking about the era... Um. Oh, they couldn't go left. Y'all see the film on TikTok? Mm. They couldn't go left. They refused to go left. And even when they go left, if they're going left with their right hand, it's insane. I don't even need to throw this on your current clips. Michael Clips. The 90s or the current era? Uh, yeah. Uh, like I said, overall, sure. There's more guys, there's more like people that watch that era and then realize, fuck, you need a left hand to be dominant. Hey, you can't look down when you dribble. Otherwise, you're fucking yourself up. And a new generation popped up, like learning from other people's mistakes or from the best players of a certain era and realizing like, oh, I got to be able to do this in order to be really good at basketball. Like, sure. By no means does that stop Dominique Wilkins from dunking on your face. Like, sorry. (laughs) Like, Dominique, Dominique Wilkins will still yam it on your face. Kobe will still dunk on Sean Bradley, who's seven foot six. Like, who do you guys have? Gobert? <laughs> Kobe's gonna yam on him too, man. Like, come on. Like, let's, let's not be stupid about this. You think AI is one of the most like freakish athletes ever? He's drafted in ninety seven, guys. What are we talking about at this point? <laughs> it's incredible. They refuse to use their left hand. For what? For what? What are they not using their left hands for? Well, they're not doing triple-double crossovers and triple-double stepbacks. Like, okay. <laughs> like, first of all, it probably wasn't allowed. Uh, yeah. And second of all, they do use their left hands. That, that, the one dude, I forgot the guy's name, D Souls or something with the neon green oh. shirt. He was like, yo, man, you know, John Stockton didn't have a left hand. I watched one game. John Stockton is pushing the ball up court, left-handed, all the way down court to get into a position. Because they're playing, as far as what their philosophies were, was probably more team basketball oriented. It wasn't ISO on the wing every time. It was, we're running a set play. We're trying to get the ball here. If we can't, we work our other options. Straight up. And there was more of this idea of specialists, I guess. Like your job is to shoot three pointers, your go- your job is to grab rebounds. Your job is to play the post, or maybe be the roll man in a pick and roll. I say fair enough. That probably limited skills, right? It probably played a role in, in limiting skills because maybe you know uh, some guy only learned how to set picks and roll to the basket, never learned to set a pick and fade to the corner for a three pointer. So thus, the guy who can do both is more skilled, I guess, technically. But as as far as the top players, it's like, well, there's Rasheed Wallace who did all of that yeah. in the, in the '90s and the 2000s. Yeah. <laughs> it's like so. Like... Ben Wall, oh my God, Ben Wallace, bro. Like I'm telling you, like Dominique Wilkins is gonna say, "Well, I only go right. Well, watch this. Here's my right hand. He's gonna yam it on your fucking face." Because he's a freak peak athlete. Like, go steal the ball from him, man. Like, just go rob, go steal the ball from him. Please. Go steal the ball from fucking Magic Johnson. Just because you have no left hand, so I can just steal the ball from you. I mean, it means nothing in regards to, like, what is being used to win a basketball game or for an individual player to get to their spots for them to score the basketball. You're not explaining that to me. You're just saying shit. Like, where's your left hand? Where's your 2K fucking step back three? <laughs> That's what they're asking for. I don't understand. Holy shit, man. All right, onward. Next one. 
you done with something when the stuff that happens now, if the stuff before that wasn't around, this stuff can't happen. Like Westinghouse can't be done with Ben Franklin. They can't be. The light company can't Look be done with Ben Shack. Franklin or Westinghouse. Sorry. You can't be done with the 90s. You can't be done with the 80s. You can't be done with the 70s because guess what? No Doc, no Jordan. No Jordan, no Kobe Bryant. No Kobe Bryant, no LeBron James. All of these guys. Oh, oh. See, here's why I'm wrecked. Here's why I'm wrecked. LeBron to this day can't do anything MJ does. Not, yeah, those two could do, yeah. Like, like he can, he could do certain things that that they can do, right? But not, not as, as not as, as good as they can. Not as efficiently, no. No, he. I'll give him passing. And, yeah. And uh, maybe physicality. I'll give him that. Longevity. I'll give him that. Longevity, but I mean, if we, yeah, that's why the whole Labalco situation. <laughs> looms large because if you didn't have the the there's all speculation you didn't have the rec the recuperation you did the fucking ability to to continue to jump as high as you can and dunk you would not be anywhere near what you are now and and even what you are now is a mirage with what like we said the Lakers like having these these free throw discrepancies. <laughs> Not that he's a great free throw shooter, but he he gets to the line more. I mean, well, I'll I'll leave that out in the in the realm of speculation. Yes, it's in the realm of speculation. Well, everything I just said, I'll leave it out there as speculation. But well, it's, like, it's like forty. It's like look, Gilbert. Like, how did forty forty year old Jordan score twenty? Because this guy has a fucking perimeter game. <laughs> yes, he didn't, need, he didn't need to be three feet from the fucking basket to score <laughs> he was an assassin from out there bro he was a fucking assassin even when his shit went down LeBron would take that in a heartbeat what he had from the mid range oh LeBron would be and I wouldn't even argue I, I would think he's the best player ever if he had a mid range yeah. game like MJ or Kobe I'm like oh you're the best like, just that's what's visually. missing it's what's missing yeah kind of I take, Tim I take Tim Duncan's mid range over LeBron's. I think I, I think I do. Yeah, but they he they might have given him more room. I'll be fair. They might have gave Duncan a little bit a little bit more room on the mid range when he'd like turn and face and hit it like a little bank shot mid range jump shot. I think they they didn't cover him as hard because no. from there there was no threat or uh, there were certain threats that weren't. There, I don't think it's where maybe they gave him a room. That, that's, but I, so I'll let someone argue with me about that. Uh, Fair enough. Here's the thing with LeBron, right? Let's say, for, let's say what he did yes this year is more close to what he's doing in his career as far as three point shooting goes, right? Where he's at forty percent this year. Okay, he catches the ball on the three point line, and he's like, "Oh shit, forty percent shooter! I need to go contest him." And he pump fakes and gets past him. Oh shit! But this guy also is a freak athlete who can just dunk on anyone. So yeah, we need to. Right. So we need to crowd the paint. Well, what's yeah. left in between? In between those, if you if he has that, then it's like it's game over. And to be honest with you, most of his career, that three point shot was not there like that. So even this year, like he's being left open when he's shooting these three pointers. Maybe they catch on to it and they're like, you know, all right, all right, LeBron, we believe you. We believe you're an you actual get playoffs, you're a good three point. Exactly. Maybe they're like, oh, you know what? We believe you now. We believe you're a good three point shooter. So now we're gonna like actually push out there. So then he's gonna maybe he gets past the guy, but they clog the paint because they know he can finish at the rim, right? He's a six eight fucking freak athlete. So what's like that little mid range shot is super duper important when it comes to efficiency and scoring. So that missing is a a, a major problem, a major major problem. Uh. Although I, I don't think teams believe him yet. That's my personal opinion. I don't think they believe him. Like, oh, it's like, oh, LeBron's a forty percent he's actually a forty percent shooter, like really in reality. I don't think people I don't think teams believe that still. I think they're just like, Oh, he's having a good year. All right. Whatever. <laughs> they're not treating him like he's Steph Curry, right? Like a forty something percent three point shooter. But whatever. Uh Okay. Play a little more. There we go. That's 
are derivatives of all of these other guys. No Chamberlain, I don't like no that Jabbar. point. No Jabbar, no Shaq, no Shaq. All of these big, none of these guys. So even these guys, that point you made right there. Yeah. Regis. Yeah. He, you see how he didn't have a he didn't have a comparison for him for Shaq. All these big <laughs> men. Like, first of all, they you would shit on Shaq if you're comparing these big men to him because he th- his deficiencies are there are their pro- proficiencies, but that's all they got. And there's no, you can't win a fucking title with a center in today's league because none of them are that dominant. Or no one's trying to find maybe a dominant center. Yeah. Maybe. When, when Minyama was standing with time, who knows? But yeah, like... <laughs> <They're>... <laughs> He's putting Joker. it in terms of automatic Joker. evolution, bro. Got, yeah, Jokic. Yeah, Jokic too. I mean, Jokic is a good player, dude. I'm not gonna hate. I don't. Want, I like Jokic. Yeah, he's a really good player. 100. I agree yeah, with that. I mean, yeah, I like Jokic. But he's not Shaq, though. He's not Shaq. It's, it's yeah, like, he's not like, Shaq. Like, like if I touch the ball, everyone must crowd me immediately. Yeah, if I, <laughs> if I'm, it, it's automatic. If I'm anywhere near the hoop, there's no stopping me. <laughs> I don't care who's on me. You're going down with the ball. Yeah, and and Chilltown, Chilltown's given this weird argument of this this whole evolution. This is where what I probably wanted wanted to get on is this whole it's oh, pure yeah. pure evolution, really, no matter what. Because really Darwin, yeah, he's Darwin. <laughs> exactly. Time went by, thus means evolution. And once again, I think we before we used a sport like baseball, where it's like, did it evolve? Is it getting better because time went by? So is it plausible that uh, maybe it doesn't work in other sports either? Mm-hmm. So, and the and the the rules can help a hitter not strike out. And the rules can help a a, a basketball player make it, it have an easier time getting to the hoop or getting points. Period. Yeah, I mean, it, to conclude this point, like what what Chilltown's doing here is he saying, well, okay, without Jordan, then LeBron doesn't happen. I'm saying LeBron isn't as good as Jordan. He's I don't think he's ever been as good as Jordan. So thus. Kill that right there. Kill that immediately. Yeah. Kill that shit. Like, yeah, you're right. Socially, culturally, if there wasn't a Jordan, maybe someone would, wouldn't have been motivated to become like the next great basketball player, which I think was Kobe instead of LeBron. But, like, let's say that's the case. Fine. But don't say Jordan's skills are now implanted in LeBron's DNA, and now LeBron's just carrying the torch of Michael Jordan around. Like, he's not like that. That's Kobe thing. That's Kobe. Kobe did that shit. Kobe took looked at MJ's game and actually studied it and worked on that shit and became like, let's be honest, like somewhat of a master of it. Right? Kobe was the best yeah. player in the fucking twenty tens, bro. Or not the twenty tens before yeah. before the twenty tens. I mean, two thousands. Two thousands. Two thousands. Yes. And by the time LeBron took over, Steph popped in. Now, now the whole uh, yeah. archetype has changed. Yeah. Now that's the thing. If you can hit he step back like- threes, come on. He was a holdover, basically. <laughs> Which sucks. He's a great player. It sucks that that happened to him, but like, let's be honest, as far as who's, you know, well, who's implanting right DNAs here, it's like, like come on. Where, where in LeBron's game is MJ? Where is it? You're saying, where in LeBron's game is Kobe? You're saying these guys pass the torch to LeBron. Like, where in his game is that? I don't see it. I'd give him more of a Charles Barkley fucking DNA thing than before LeBron or, or before uh, MJ or Kobe. I'd say he's, he's more like Charles. Like a power yeah, guy you. who can hit a jump shot once in a while. Like, come on. And then the, the pass-off from LeBron is Zion. It's not, yeah. it's not Luka Doncic. No. Maybe stats-wise, maybe stats, it's like, oh my god, they're almost hitting a triple-double. Maybe stats wise, but as far as like what they're doing on the court, his his second coming is fucking Zion Williamson, bro. Yeah. It's not Luca. So what are we doing here? It, it, in fact, in this era, like Kyrie is the second coming of Kobe. Like he's shorter, right? He's smaller. Uh, as far as Kobe's peak athleticism, he's not as peak athlete as Kobe was. But as far as understanding. Dribble moves and skill sets and shit like that. So Kyrie's actually closer to MJ than LeBron is. If we're watching the game of basketball, if we're doing sentimental shit like I think these guys do, 
then sure, I guess it went from MJ, fuck Kobe, and right to LeBron, apparently. We do sentimental things. Like, come on, like, why aren't we, like, watching the games and, like, looking at that? It's like, what are they looking at, honestly? Like, what the <laughs> it's, it's literally in their arguments. Yo, why is LeBron better? Well, he can shoot better three-pointers. Well, MJ didn't shoot three-pointers. Yeah, but, you know, LeBron is a direct descendant of MJ. Like, what? How'd you do that? How's he, the, how's he the second or third coming of fucking MJ, but he doesn't, but MJ didn't shoot three-pointers, and now he is. Did MJ bully his way in the paint when he was playing? Like, no, he finessed. No. He'd do fucking wiry, wire fucking axe in the air. Who does that look like? Kyrie, not LeBron. What are we doing, man? Like, <laughs> what are we watching when we're watching these games? Like, actually. It's, that's, not even the, that's not even the shit on LeBron. It's just like, you're not that type of game. You're not. So why is this... Go- <sighs> Whatever. Let's let Chilltown finish this. Here we go. This without those guys. You can't be done with something when something came from that. So there's no way you could be done with the 90s. There's no way you could be done with the 80s. There's no way you could be done with the 70s. His argument is dog trash, bro. Came from that. The reason, the, how could- we, we, I, we need Ticket TV to come in here and rant with these fools. They might have kicked them out. I haven't seen them on there. I haven't really watched their shit in a while, but I'm saying like I haven't really seen them on there. Like talking to these guys, because that's to me that's blasphemous. What he's saying right now, of like, like yeah, <laughs> you you needed that shitty ninety. Like it, he's basically agreeing with them, but use trying to use some sort of logic to say why they're important. You can't get rid of the nineties. Look, this is where someone dribbled. See, someone actually dribbled a basketball here, and it led to what we're seeing today. Like that's his argument. Yeah. <laughs> See this Stone Age dribbling. Guess what? It led to Kyrie Irving. Like, what? That's your argument? Instead of, like, pointing out actual basketball things? Like, first steps. Quickness, ability, agility. Uh, what was the point of why, why, why MJ was doing this, or uh, Shaq was doing that, or, or uh, Hakeem was doing this or that? Like, what, what was the point of what they were doing? And do we, do we see the same th- skill levels today in regards to those things? With a lot of guys, these one percenters from the '90s, I don't think you see that. I don't think you see MJ setups of like getting himself open, other than someone maybe like Kyrie. It's like I don't think we see fucking Hakeem's post moves. Maybe Jokic, maybe the Joker's like that a little bit, but even then, he's not a pr- premier. He's not a prime time post scorer like that. Maybe maybe Anthony Davis might. Be, I don't know. I don't know. I don't think we. I don't think we see like Hakeem's out there like that because I don't think they allow post games to happen too often, <laughs> even though they have opportunities to do so. Uh, like who? Like, like come on, like <laughs> actually S G A, Shea Gilders Alexander. Like, I see A I there. I see a little bit of like, Allen Iverson. Or a decent amount of Allen Iverson there. Except maybe a better, maybe a better shooter, like more efficient of a shooter. But then again, you know the whole defense is collapsing on AI when he does something on the teams that he was on, right? Mm-hmm. But that that's whatever, right? I'm just trying to look at ability. But I think that's not has nothing to do with the, the three videos you just showed me. These three fucking shorts. Where's like where's anyone talking about ability at? Where <laughs> like actually Good basketball luck. ability, man? Like, hey, do you understand what it means to cut left and go right? Like, like the physicality, like what that means physically. And then if you're moving at such a fast rate, what it means to stop that or attempt to stop that. Which means it doesn't matter what era you're in. Like, if you're moving that quick, like that at that rate, you're probably cooked. It is what it is. <laughs> But whatever. Me rambling has made this video way lo- way longer than it should be, but it felt good to just say all that. So I'm not mad. Uh, anything you want to add, Anthony? Before I close this. No, thing that was good. Yeah, I just wanted to see what you thought of these. These I thought it was I think it was a good video. 
I, well, <laughs> I can just go and go and go. So pause. Uh, all right. There's our reaction. Good God, guys, go watch, ta like watch tape, and then like here. Or actually, actually, here's my thing to you: go watch tape, and then try to do it yourselves from any era, from any era. Look at a move they make or something like that, and then try to copy that. And then you tell me like what's what. With that said, we're done here.